Hello, as part of our big data series, today we're going to look at TIPCO JasperSoft and how it can interact with Cloudera Impala to report and do analysis on the data you have in your cluster. Let's first take a quick look at our environment. I do have a TIPCO Jasper report server installed locally in my machine. And as a cluster, I'm using the Cloudera Quick Start VM, which I have running on a VMware in my machine. As you can see, if we go to our uh, query editors and go to Impala, you can see here I have a couple of sample data tables uh, already loaded in my Impala Metastore. The data you're probably familiar with is the Yelp reviews data. So let's uh, look at the data we have. We can quickly uh, query the data uh, from the console and see how the result look like. For this particular data set, my data is split into two tables. One has the information about the businesses and the other one has all the information about the reviews that the users have done in Yelp. And the idea is that we're going to use this data in a JasperSoft domain. Let's get to work. First, I will log in into my Jasper report server. And to be able to create my domain, the first thing I will need is to create a data source to connect to my Impala cluster. I click on create. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a JDBC data source for connecting to Impala. There is another Impala data source driver, which is our own connector. And I will talk a little bit about the difference between the two of them later on. So let's go with JDBC data source. We pick the driver, the Impala driver. Uh, it's installed by default. This is actually the TIPCO software JDBC driver. You can also use the Cloudera driver. And I'll again talk a little bit about that in a different video. The host name in this case is the IP address of my Quick Start VM. I'll go ahead to my Quick Start VM and quickly pick the IP address. I'll copy this out and just paste it here. I do not have any type of uh, security or authentication set up in this cluster. I could have, and I can use either Sentry or Kerberos. In this case, I have a simple cluster as it comes uh, with the Quick Start VM. So with this, I can quickly test and I see the connection pass dialog, meaning that everything is ready to go. So let's go ahead and save this data source. I'll pick a name. Impala sounds a good name. And I'll pick a place to save it. I'll go to my samples, data sources, and leave it there for now. With our data connectivity tested and ready to go, we can go ahead and start building a domain. I go to create domain. And the add new domain uh, flow starts. So there's a couple of things uh, I require to do here. First is, of course, pick a name for my domain. Um, let's go with Yelp domain. I have to choose a save location. I'll go ahead again in public and I have my samples folder and I have a folder for the domains. I'll put it there. And of course I have to select which data source I'm going to use. And here is where we're going to point this to the data source that we already created in the previous step. So let's go there, pick Impala. And we're ready to start building this with the domain designer. Let's take a peek at that. The first thing that the domain designer will uh, show us is a uh, select schema dialog. So I can pick my default schema where all my tables are in my Hive Metastore. And as you can see, once I have done that, it actually shows me all the tables that I have uh, already in my Impala cluster. I'll pick the business one and the reviews. As I said before, these are the two tables that are from the Yelp data set that I'm going to use. Once I have picked the tables I need, uh, I can go to the joins and specify the joins uh, that I want to do in this uh, particular domain. So I'll just use the business ID as, a, uh, as the join ID for the two tables between business and reviews and do an inner join with those two. And of course, the display layer allows me to show this in a way that the end user will be able to understand where the information is coming from 
and it allows me to change the labels and the descriptions that I have for each one of the fields. Let's uh, jump into another domain that I already created and have all the information set up so you can see how that looks like. So this domain has a little bit more work on the display layer. I have uh, put some human readable name for the fields that are coming from my uh, database. I also have done certain things like for example in the stars you can see that I have chosen to uh, have a summary calculation for summing them. I can choose different things for example if I want to see the average star once I am aggregating this information which will make a little bit more sense I can do that uh, directly there. So this gives you a good idea of what uh, are all the things that I can uh, build for my end user to work and analyze this data. Let's go ahead and press OK. And we'll save this domain. And with that, we're ready to start using it. So let's go to create and let's create an ad hoc view. We'll look for our Yelp domain. As you see, the end user sees the information we added on the display layer, the way we group them. So it's a lot easier for them to understand where the data is coming from and what does the data mean. So I'll select all the fields that I have, click OK here, and I'll start with a cross tab for now. The other thing I want to do, instead of going with sample data, I want to use the full data set. If I double click on Total reviews, I can see I have uh, about a million reviews, uh, 1.7 million reviews here in my data set. It will be interesting to see how they break out by state. Um, probably I can create a category here and after state by city. Uh, so you can do anything that uh, you will normally do uh, on any ad hoc view. We can sort this information out. Probably the sending is better. I can filter, let's skip Nevada and Arizona only. As you see, when I do a keep only, it creates automatically a filter for me with all those states selected. Uh, let's open up uh, this a little bit more. And I can go on, uh, uh, I know, adding filters for uh, the category. Let's see, I wanna use a contains, and I'll look for bars. So I have my top reviewed bars in Nevada and Arizona, and I can continue this analysis either with a chart or digging deeper into the data. But the point here is that I can benefit of uh, the simplicity of Jasper's of domains, the performance of my Cloudera cluster behind the scenes doing live queries as I drag and drop my measures. And we can see that very easily if we look at the query log on my Impala Quick Start VM. So this is how you can leverage the benefits of Cloudera with a BI tool like Jasper Report Server. Thank you for your time.